we're going to review kind of like the big things that we did last week. So the big thing we did is we had lines, right? We were either graphing lines or creating equations for lines. But they both followed the same formula. Does anyone remember what the formula was that we've been using? Yeah. Y equals M X plus B. Perfect. There we go. Group thing. We got that. We got that. So we got Y equals M X plus B. This is the format that will make a straight line. Typically a diagonal line, right? That's usually what we see. There's two main parts to this equation. The first one being this M value. The second one being this B value. What does our M represent? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the slope. Yeah, yeah, it's a slope. The slope is like the steepness of something, like how fast it's going up or going down. Um, the very first day back, we would have talked about that. So if you think about uh, a hill, right, you could describe how steep that is by how fast it's going downwards. Right? The bigger the number, the more steep something is. If you're talking about something really flat, like this ground right here, not very steep, that would have no slope or a very small number, maybe like 0 0.1 or something. Slope is how steep something is. The mathematical formula we've been using for slope is rise over run. That's how fast it goes up divided by how fast it goes to the side. The sheet, I'll get you one. Perfect. What does the letter B stand for? Yeah, it's the y intercept. So if you're looking at a graph, it's where it crosses that y axis, right? So we call it the y-intercept. I usually just put y-int. That means y-intercept. It's where our line's going to cross the y-axis if you were to graph it. Cool. The letter y and the letter x represent coordinates, right? It's how you describe where something is on a graph. That part um, should have been from math nine. You should kind of remember a little bit about those coordinates. You can describe a point by saying it's X value, how far left or right it's gone, and it's Y value, how high up or down it's gone. Cool. People remember that a little bit? Yeah? Yeah, no. Some people did online videos, yes. Some people did not do online videos, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's try to use this y equals mx plus b. So if we look here, we've got a graph. We're going to do two things with this graph. My computer's been crazy all day. We're going to try to turn this line, this line right here, into an equation. It's the first thing we're going to try to do. When I look at that, I realize it's a straight line, yeah? So if it's a straight line, it has to follow this format. Y equals mx plus b. All lines are going to follow that format. The two parts you have to figure out will be your m and your b. Your M is your slope of this line. This means M will equal whatever you rise divided by whatever you run. Been a while since we've calculated slope. That was like the first or second day back. To calculate slope, you want to find two points on your graph, 
And any two points will work. Preferably find them as close together as you can. So when I'm looking at this line, this is a point on my graph. Notice how it's crossing like perfectly on the grid? That's one point. If I go along, I would say, oh, that's pretty close. We'll say that's a point right there. Too. There's another point up here. You could use that one as well. And there's another point up here. You could use that one as well. The closer together they are, the easier it'll be. So I'm going to use this one and this one because they're both crossing the grid at a perfect spot. I'm going to mark those points. To find your slope, you're going to calculate your rise and your run from your left point to your right point. So my rise would be up, one, two, and my run would be over, one. This is a rise of two and a run of one. I'll mark it down in red so you can kind of see it. Rise of two. Run of one. So my slope is two divided by one, which if you were to simplify that equals two. This is the only question that we're going to do today because it's just review on how to calculate slope. So if you want to ask a question, now would be a great time to ask a question about slope. All right, so that will be my B value or my M value. To find my B value, my B value is my Y intercept. A y-intercept is where on the graph it crosses your y-axis. Your y-axis is the up and down axis. So this right here that's my y-axis in yellow. So I need to figure out where my graph crosses that yellow line. It crosses right there at negative Meaning that my y-intercept value is negative 3. Now that I know my m and I know my b, I can create my equation. My equation will be y equals 2x. Minus 3. That's my equation. Any question anyone will be like, hey, I don't know where that came from. All right, the next thing we learned was how to take equations and turn them into graphs, right? That was taking a graph and turning it into an equation. Now we're going to go the other way. So they've given us an equation right up here. We want to graph that equation. When you look at that equation, hopefully you notice that it is in the form y equals mx plus b. That means this equation must be a straight line. Same form. Then I can tell the parts of it. So the m value is telling me my slope. So for this question, slope is 2 divided by 3. My B value, which in this case is plus 1, 
is telling me my y-intercept is at 1. The x's and the y's just stay x and y. Like they don't matter. They just stay x y. We're okay with that? Yeah? All right, if we want to graph this then, we need a starting point to start our drawing, and then we need to know the next point to get to. Your starting point is your y-intercept. So that's the first dot that you're going to graph. So you're going to go and put a dot at the y-intercept of 1. Then you have to find another dot. The way you find that other dot is by using your slope. Because your slope is telling you how far you need to rise divided by how far you need to run to get to another spot. So it's telling you rise two, run three. And if you do that, you'll get another point. Once you have two points, you could draw the line. It's just connect the dots, use a ruler so you make sure it's nice and straight. My line would look like this. Take a ruler, draw a nice straight line, goes through both points. Um, if you don't have a ruler, that's fine. We don't usually use rulers anyway. Um, use your debit card, use your ID card, use the back of your calculator, use whatever you got to use. But use a straight line. And now I've turned this equation into this line. That's basically everything we did last week. We did a little bit like more detail on some of the things, but that's like the biggest chunks of it. Today and tomorrow, what we're going to do is we're going to take situations like this, where there's two lines, and we're going to figure out where they cross each other. So we're going to start to figure out things like, where is this spot right here? Where the lines cross each other. Now, on a picture, it's easy. On a picture, it's easy to look at that and say, oh, it crosses right there. Without a picture, it's a little bit hard. So we're going to learn how to do it without a picture. Cool. Any questions about this stuff before I move on to our new stuff? Because that's all somewhat review. Does it feel like review? <laughs> Felt brand new? Okay. The new stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to find where lines cross each other. That has like a math name. It, it, we wouldn't say, oh, yeah, find where two lines cross each other. It's just not mathematical enough way of saying that. Even though that's what we're doing. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do something called solving a systems of equations. When you break that phrase down, solving means finding x and y. A systems of equation means two lines. So we're finding an x and a y where two lines cross. That's what we're doing. The mathy way of saying it is solve a systems of equations. This will be an entire unit in Math 10C. I think it's actually your last unit in Math 10C. There's two different algebraic, so by hand, ways that you can solve a system of equations. Today we're going to learn substitution. Tomorrow you will learn something called elimination. Those are the two different ways to solve these questions. Personally, I like substitution more. 
in all honesty, you can pick whichever way you want and get really good at that way. So if you like one more than the other, you can kind of rely on it and it works. Cool. We'll start with a couple examples and then I'll let you do some on your own. This first question right here. I know this is a system of equations because I have two lines given to me. This is my first line or my first equation, y equals x plus 2. This is my second equation, y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 0 0.25. The first thing I have to do is make sure that one of the letters in one of the equations is all by itself. We actually have that twice here. So if you look, this equation has one letter by itself, y equals. This equation also has that, one letter by itself, y equals. You have to have one of those to be able to do this. It's already set up for you. And in fact, it'll probably almost always be set up. The second thing you want to do now is you want to substitute. What substitute means is that if this y equals x plus 2, then this y also equals x plus 2. Because they're the same letter, which means they must be the same thing. So what I can do is I can take this x plus 2 and I can substitute it into the second equation. I'm going to change that y to be x plus 2. And any time we do substitution, we want to put brackets around it like that. Everything else will stay the same. So I've taken this x plus 2 and I've substituted it in for y. So it became this. Cool. If you do substitution properly, you should have only one letter left. Notice how we only have the letter X left. Right? We have two of them, but we only have the letter X. Hello, Mr. Marshall. Oh, you just dished in a little gifts. <laughs> If you haven't done it properly, then you would have a y and an x still in your question. But we don't. All we have left is x's. So that means we've done the right thing. Now your goal is to manipulate this so that the x's are all on one side and everything else is on the other side. To do that, we want to make sure if there's brackets, we multiply anything into those brackets. There's not anything, so those brackets can go away. If there had been a little number here, I would have multiplied it into the brackets. But there wasn't a number, so the brackets mean nothing. Now, my goal is to get my x's to the same side. To do that, we do something called opposite operations. So I want to move this, this negative 3 over 4x, I want to move it to the other side. The way that you do that is with opposites. So notice that this is a negative 3 over 4x. In order to move it, I would do plus 3 over 4x. And I would do that to both sides. The reason I do the opposite is because if you added these together, if you put in your calculator negative 3 over 4 plus 3 over 4, it would equal 0, which means that these x's no longer exist on the right-hand side of the equation. Yes. So if you want to change your decimal, go like 3 over 4, make it 0 0.75, do that. On the left-hand side, I now have x plus 3 over 4x. That's like 1x plus 3 over 4x. If you put that in your calculator, 1 
plus 3 divided by 4 would give you 1.75x. I forgot to write plus two, sorry. That's better. So I've moved my x's so they're all on one side of the equation together. Now that they're on one side of the equation, my goal will be to get this x by itself. To do that, I have to move two numbers over. I have to move the 1.75 to the other side, and I have to move the plus 2 to the other side. And you have to move it in the proper order. So you've got to move one of them first and one of them second. And the order matters. The way you decide on which things to move is bed mass but backwards. So you guys want to learn bed mass last year? I think you would have actually learned it years ago. Uh, bed mass. Bed mass is the order of operations. When you move things, you do bed mass backwards. So the first number we want to move is any additions or subtractions. This is addition plus two. That needs to move first. You move things by doing opposite operations. The opposite of plus 2 is minus 2. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. That will cancel out on one side. Oh boy, I need more space. And it will leave me with 1 0.75x on the left side equals negative 1.75 on the right side. I move this 2 from the left to the right. 0 0.25 minus 2 is negative 1.75. Cool. Next number we have to move is 1.75. You have to do the opposite. So this is 1.75 times x, right? The opposite of timesing is dividing. So I need to divide both sides by 1.75. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1.75. And I will get x equals 1. Sorry, negative 1. Okay, it's been a long time since you've had to do math like that. So I'm going to give you a second. Like, make sure you got it written down. And please ask questions because I know that that was not clear. Like, yeah, I know it, so you've got to ask. So the only way I can help you is if you ask me which numbers don't make sense. Yes, sir. This part? Or this part? This one? Um, to get this 1.75, this one, I took 1 and I added... 3 divided by 4. And I had to use my calculator. Right? Like 3 divided by 4 is a decimal. So when you put that in, 1 plus 3 divided by 4, it'll give you 1.75. So you've got to do that calculation. Yes. Yes. Notice that the x, like the letter x, never changed. Right? Sometimes people put like x squared or something crazy. When we're adding letters together, it just stays as x. Cool, that's a good question. And there's, I know there's more out there, so feel free. Yep. Yep. 
Okay, this x value of negative 1 is not your final answer. Remember, we were looking for a point on a graph where two things cross each other, right? So if I said they cross each other at x equals negative 1, that doesn't tell me enough information. That only tells me how far left or right to move. I now need a y value to tell me how high up or how far down it is. Right? Think of it as coordinates. You only have one coordinate right now. You only have left or right. You now need an up or down coordinate. That's your y value. The beautiful part about substitution is finding the second coordinate is much, much easier. The reason it's so easy is because now that I know one of my coordinates, I know x equals negative 1, I can use that number in this equation to find what y equals. So it's like you substitute again. I'm going to take that first equation, which is y equals x plus 2, and I'm going to change it to be y equals negative 1 plus 2. And again, when I substitute, I put brackets around it. Yep. Is it right big enough that you can actually read it without fuzziness? I'm hoping the internet gets a little better real quick. Are you on the teacher Wi-Fi or the oh, oh, teacher yes. Wi-Fi? Teacher Wi-Fi. So negative 1 plus 2 would equal positive 1. That means y equals positive 1. Your final answer is now that point. And you describe that point by writing the x value first, the y value second. So it would be at negative 1, 1. That is the answer to that system of equations. It's where they cross each other. Now that the TV's blurry, uh, please make sure you ask questions because you probably can't see things very clearly. Yes, sir. Oh, oh yes, yes. <laughs> so I took that, I substituted it into the second equation. So I got that. Notice that I put brackets around it. Whenever you substitute, you should put brackets. Because if I needed to, I would multiply into the brackets. In this question, there is no multiplication necessary, so I can get rid of the brackets. But I always put them first, just to see if I need to multiply. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sorry. Good call. You saved me from making a big mistake. Negative one half x. If you substitute it properly, x should be your only letter. It is my only letter. All the y's are gone. Right? I have an x here and an x here. That's fine. But there's no way more y's. Now I need to find what x equals. To do that, I need to get all my x's to one side. You move them by doing opposite operations. I'm going to choose to move this negative 2x to the left side. You do that by doing the opposite of whatever it currently is. It's currently minus 2x. I'm going to add 2x. Negative 1 over 2x plus 2x, if I put it in my calculator, negative 1 over 2 plus 2 equals positive 1.5x. Everything else will remain. So it's still plus 2. These two x's will now cancel, and it equals plus 11, which you just put 11. I've moved my x's so they're all on one side. Now that your x's are all on one side, I can start to get x by itself. 
You do that by moving these numbers to the other side of the equal sign. You need to move the 1.5 and you need to move the 2. The order matters. You have to move it in reverse bed mass. So you have to move any addition subtractions first. You move things by doing opposite operations. The opposite of plus 2 is minus 2. Those twos will cancel out. I now have 1.5x equals 9. I now have 1.5x equals 9. I need to move that 1.5 to the other side. You do it by doing opposite operations. This is a 1.5 times x, the opposite of times is divide. So I divide 1.5 to the other side. And you get x equals 6. I'll let you look at that, ask a question, or transfer my dreams. You now have half an answer, right? You have your x coordinate. You now need your y coordinate. So all you know right now is how far left or right to go. I know to go six units to the right. Now I have to figure how far up or how far down I have to go. You do that by taking your answer, putting it back into one of the original equations. So we're going to take this. I'm going to put it into one of the original equations. So that it looks like this. Y equals negative 1 over 2. The x changes to bracket 6 bracket plus 2. <laughs> this thing you can just calculate. If you put that in your calculator, negative 1 over 2 times 6 plus 2 will give you your answer. y equals negative 1. This means that the solution to my systems of equations is 6, comma, negative 1. Any question about that second one? Yep. So when you found x, is it always going to be put into the first equation of y, or is it going to have the second one? Very good question. So if we put this into the second equation, I'm just going to do it on the side. I would get. Negative 2 times 6 plus 11. I'm ready, so slow because my calculator or my computer is lagging. If you then calculated this, negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Negative 12 plus 11 is negative 1. And you end up getting the exact same answer. So it does not matter which one you put it in. You can put it into the first equation or the second equation, whichever one you're more comfortable with. Like, honestly, if that was me, normally I would have put it into this one because that's easier than a fraction. 
Right? So that's, I would have chose this one. But you can pick either one and you would be right. And the reason that works is because this point is on both lines, right? So it should work for both. Okay, we'll do one more together, but we're gonna do it in chunks. So I'm gonna tell you to do a step. You'll see if you did it right. We're looking at C. I want you to substitute the first equation into the second equation. So just do that step. Just try your best. No one can see your page, right? It's just you. I'll give you about 20 seconds to try to do that. Okay, this one's a little trickier than the other ones. To substitute, you would take this and you would plug it into y for the second equation. And now you would have negative 1 over 5x minus 0 0.8 equals 1 over 2x plus 5. If you didn't get that, write it down now. Right? But try to figure out kind of what you wrote differently. That's the substitution step. It'll always be your first step. If you put brackets around it, that's fine. That's even better. Um, but then I would get rid of the brackets because there's nothing outside of them to multiply it. Right? Now that we're all in the same step, the second thing you do is you get all the x's to one side of the equation. So I want you to try to move. Oh, do you guys always just want to move the same way? Make things easy. Let's move this one half x to the other side. So I want you to try to move the 1 over 2x to the other side. You are more than welcome to use uh, decimals if you want to. But try to move that over. I'll give you about a minute to see if you can move those x's from one side to the other. Use your notes right up on the pages above if you need to. To move x's from one side to the other, you need to add or subtract. In this case, it's plus 1 over 2. So the opposite of positive 1 over 2 would be subtracting 1 over 2. So to move these x's, you're going to subtract 1 over 2x from both sides. The thing that most people do on that step is they divide 1 over 2 from both sides. And the reason why is because it gets a little bit confusing. When I divide in this step of the old question, but now I'm adding and subtracting in this step. The difference being, in this step in the previous question, I wasn't moving the x's. I was only moving the 1.5, and I left the x where it was. In this question, I'm moving the entire term 1 over 2x. So the whole thing has to move. And when the whole thing moves, it'll be addition or subtraction every time. Okay, that's the difference between this and this. If you did that, um, I suspect most of us used our calculators. You should get negative 0.7x 
minus 0 0.8 equals 5. Is that what we got, people who put on their calculator? Got a couple waves, a couple nods. Okay, good. It should have only been one anyway. Um, if it's like more than that, if it's two, then do two. If it's three, then do three. But this should have, this should have worked out to be perfectly quite the same. Okay. Now, all my x's are on one side of the equal sign. That's good. My goal is to get this x by itself. What's the first number I'm going to have to move? The negative 0.7 or the negative 0.8? Give it a shot, Matt. The 0.8 is correct, right? This is the one you want to move because you want to move additions and subtractions first. This is a multiply by the x. This is a subtract from the x. So I'll give you a second here. Try to move the negative 0.8 to the other side. All right, because this is a subtraction away from the x, the opposite of subtraction would be addition. So I'm going to add 0 0.8 to the other side. On the left side of the equal sign, that means the only thing I have left is negative 0.7x. These 0.8s would cancel each other out. Equals 5 plus 0 0.8 would equal 5.8. Awesome. Now, I need to move this negative 0.7 to the other side. I'll let you do it on your own, but before I send you off on your own, I don't want you to fall for what most people would do, and most people would add 0.7 to both sides. That won't work. The reason it won't work is because this is not a subtraction. This is negative 0.7 times x. So you need to do the opposite of timesing, the opposite of multiplication to move that number. So I'll give you a second. The opposite of timesing would have been dividing by negative 0.7. That means I need to divide both sides by negative 0.7. I also like, just make, a, let's make this clear. Um, this line means divide, right? Like I have, I've been writing these lines to show division. That's what that is. So I'm not doing like the typical division symbol. I'm doing lines for division. It's because I'm turning it into a fraction and fractions are division, right? So that's why I'm drawing lines like that. If you put that into your calculator, you should have got x equals positive. I feel like, I feel like I'm wrong, so I'm going to actually calculate it. 5.8. Yeah, that's a bad number. We'll do 8.28, 8.29. We'll round it. And it would be negative 8.29. If you got 8.2857 or 8.28 or whatever, I, I'd give you the mark. But just know that it should round to a neg or a negative 8.29. Yep. Um, now, that, now that you have an x coordinate, you need a y coordinate. So give you a minute to see if you can figure out how to get your y coordinate. Okay. To get the y coordinate, you would have taken this x value 
and put it into one of your original equations. I'm going to put it into this one. It doesn't matter which one you pick. So for me, that means I now have 1 over 2 times 8, negative 8.29 plus 5 equals y. This thing can go in your calculator. So you'll multiply 1 over 2 times negative 8.29. Then you will add 5. And you should get 0 0.855. Meaning that my solution or where these two lines would cross each other is negative 8.29 comma 0 0.855. If you did 0 0.86, because it probably would have said around to the nearest tenth, that's fine too. All right. Question D. I'm just going to erase this stuff so it's out of my way. Maybe I'm not going to erase it because the computer won't let me. <laughs> the first step is to make sure. I'm sorry, this is so slow. There we go. The first step is to take one equation and substitute it into the other equation. Okay, so go ahead, try again, see if you can substitute this first equation into the second equation. So try your absolute best to do that. I'll give you a minute or so. If you feel confident, then feel free to work ahead and see if you get the right answer. Into the second equation, you would take this negative 2x minus 6, you would substitute it in for y right there. And I would now have negative 2x minus 6 equals x. This y became this statement. Again, the reason I can do that is because these y's are the same. So if this y equals that, then this y can become that as well. Right, they're the same one. Perfect. Now that you have your equations put together, so there's only one letter, there's only the letter X, your goal is to get the X's on one side of the equation together. I'm going to try to move this minus 2X to the other side. Just a reminder that there's an invisible number right here. There's an invisible 1x right there. So I want you to try to move this minus 2x to the other side. I'll give you about 45 seconds to try that. All right, to move things and to move entire x's, right? Like to move the whole term, you need to do the opposite either addition or subtraction. So the opposite for us would be add 2x to both sides. Because negative 2 plus 2 would get rid of the x's on this side and move them to the other side. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides. That means these x's on the left would equal 0. They would go away. I would only be left with negative 6 equals 1x plus 2x is 3x. We have effectively gotten all of our x's to one side. Once all of your x's are on one side, your goal is then to get the x by itself on that side. So I need to move this 3 from the right side to the left side. So 
So I'll give you about 30 seconds to see if you can move that number three from the right to the left. All right. In order to move numbers, you have to know what they're doing so you can do the opposite of it. This is 3 times x. That's how it's attached to the x. The opposite of times is divide. So I have to divide this 3 to the other side. Yep. Oh, yeah, you moved the wrong number. You got to move the 3 over away from the x. Negative 6 divided by 3 would be negative 2 equals x. You now have half your answer. You now know the x coordinate for where these two lines cross each other. To figure out the y coordinate for where two things cross each other, you take your answer and you substitute it into one of your original equations. This one is actually quite easy because if you substitute it into the second equation, you'll notice the second equation says y equals x. So that means if x is negative 2, y is also negative 2. giving me my final answer of negative 2 comma negative 2. I feel like I see happier people by the fourth example. I'm starting to, I'm starting to come along a little bit. You'll notice it is, it's kind of a pattern, right? I mean, it's a lot of steps to the pattern, but it is the same pattern every question. We're substituting, we're adding or subtracting, and then sometimes we add or subtract, sometimes we divide. It just depends on the question. All right, I want you to try one all the way to the end. So the second one right here, or uh, the letter E, I want you to see if you can solve it all the way down to the end and get a solution, and then I will give you the solution to see if you got it right. Is I would substitute this negative 3x into that y. That's my first step. I think most people are doing that same first step. So you would have negative 3x equals x minus 12. Okay, from that point, I need to move all the x's to one side or the other. For this question, I would choose to move this one x from the right to the left. If you chose to move it left to right, you're not wrong. You can still get the exact same right answer. So understand that it doesn't matter which side you go to. I'm only choosing to go to the left because there's no extra numbers over there. Right? It's just the negative 3x. There's no plus 10s or anything like that. Where this side has a minus 12 on it, and I would rather just move away from that. So that's why I'm choosing to go from right to left. I also remember this is an invisible 1x. So that means I need to subtract 1x to the other side. This would give me negative 4x's on the left, equals negative 12. The only way you can move x terms, like the whole thing like that, is to subtract it over or to add it over. I'm not multiplying or dividing to move x's. When I'm at this point, I need to move the negative 4. I'm not moving the x, just the negative 4. So to move this negative 4, I need to divide both sides by negative 4. The reason I'm choosing to divide by negative 4 is because that negative 4 is multiplying to the x. And the opposite of multiply is divide. 
So this becomes x equals 3. You then take that answer. You substitute it back into one of the originals. And you can calculate your second coordinate. Y equals negative 3 times 3. This means Y equals negative 9. Giving me an answer of 3 comma negative 9. All right, there's one more question here. Um, you don't need this. Don't need that video.